I'm standing here with Bincy Baby from Hi. Iran Scientific. Hi, I'm super. And her project is called the eToilet Imperial Model. My first question is, what makes your project stand out from all the others? What's unique about it? We, we have been working on the toilet front end, on the user experience, uh, how to improvise the user experience of toilets, especially in the public sanitation front. Given all those problems of public sanitation in India, including the space, availability of manpower for maintaining the toilets and sustaining the toilets. So that is where we brought in technology on how to maintain a toilet clean and I mean hygienic for a person. Whenever a user enters, it ensures that the toilet is ready for use. And there we have integrated technology. So that, that keeps us apart from others. Uh, and what have you been major successes so far, um, achievements? Okay, we have been in the sector for the last four years. Uh, we have implemented around 450 e-toilets across India, which include 150 school toilets. As uh, part of the RTTC program, we are doing a few five research components. So as to improvise the user interfaces, there's a disinfection system of the toilets, there's a flow wash mechanism, a pressure washing system for the toilets which ensures that the toilet is much more clean and hygienic, which uses less water and resources. So that is the research component which we have integrated into an imperial model and that is at, uh, at the display at the fair. Okay. And what have been major frustrations, barriers, difficulties that you are facing or that you had to overcome? Okay. That's a very good question because uh, we face in at the when we are in the field because whenever you are at a lab you never anticipate what's going to be the real problem. What we face in the field is that sanitation is not still considered as a very real problem at least in Indian public uh, sanitation sphere. It's unlike the uh, solid waste issue. You, you don't see a problem of sanitation because people tend to go for the open defecation and uh, there's not a problem yet identified. So we have seen that there is non-availability of adequate space because there's still a feeling that toilet is going to dirty the atmosphere. So even though you say it's an e-toilet, there's still an apprehension about having a toilet nearby my home or office or whatever. Second is the availability of utility connections, like you need to have some electricity and water. So we, that's what we are trying to overcome in our next level of research. And third is that people used to have earlier have a feeling that, oh, this is e-toilet and this is going to be electronics. But now that is slowly fading away. But then there's a certain level of inhibition there had been, but now the people are more, they understand there's no e in it. It's just, just for taking care of the man monitoring and management of the toilets. And um, how far are you um, in terms of implementing this at a large scale? It yeah. sounds like you are already working at a scale. Yes. Um, are you basically ready to roll it out really big? Yes, we are actually we are trying to move out to other places in India. We are now basically in Kerala and a few of the states in India. But there are many other places in India which would require these kind of sanitation facilities. It's uh, irrespective of the geography. It's because Indian cities are coming larger and larger due to large migrant population coming up. And cities don't have uh, infrastructure to have these toilet facilities. And that is where this issue of this, this uh, particular solution of e-toilets fits in because it requires less space and uses less water and power when compared to the other facilities already available and it's unmanned. So that is where we think that in futuristic, in a futuristic point of view, Indian cities would definitely need a solution. And in that context, we are working with most of the government agencies and whoever is there in that ecosystem to make this uh, as a solution. And finally, have you collaborated with any of the other grantees and their projects that are Yes, here? definitely. Because as a futuristic vision, the toilets should be self-sustaining. It should not be connected to any of the grid for power or electricity connection. We have seen that there is some interesting grantees who is already there with the foundation. One is the Caltech, the second one is the Duke. So if the toilets need to work, it, needs, it should have water and electricity, which uh, both of them have, are doing a research on that and they are ready for field trial. Which one was the second one? One was Duke University. Duke University. The, second, the first is Caltech. Mm -hmm. So we are considering to kind of do a field trial with them in real uh, ground with actual usage and see uh, they have, how they process the waste and they give back the water, a per, at least a percentage of the water requirement of the toilet from the human waste processing itself as well as the energy. So which ensures that the toilet, given all those issues of non-availability of water and electricity, 
can this uh, toilets self sustain can they power their own requirement to find their, their own power sources without any pollution to the environment and that is a longer vision and we are very glad that it aligns with the foundation's larger vision of having yeah. off grid self sustain toilets yeah great thank, thank you very much thank you very much thank you for coming